It's okay. Uh, before we move on to that, I just want to say, Connor, I've got a really good uh, exercise regimen that will really buff out your forearms. It only it only works oh, for great. one of your forearms, though. So keep that in mind. Oh, all right. Well, if you want to DM me the the details on that later, or, I mean, or you can tell me on the air right now. No, 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 no. It's just fine. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> about playing guitar, you fucking weirdo. Oh, gotcha. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the intro. Uh, <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Cold Read the Podcast. It's time for your monthly personal check-in, courtesy of your boy, Vinny. I know you can't answer me, but I want you to think to yourself right now, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What is next on your adventure towards whatever it is you're trying to achieve? Think about these things as I share another little moment of catharsis, hoping others can learn from it. Earlier in the week, I fell into a bit of a small slump. I call it a slump, but in actuality, it was more anxiety and depression creeping its way back out of my brain. I've been working pretty hard on building up a resume to showcase to possible employers out there, meaning that I've written four original songs in the past, well, what, month and a half, I think? Which, if you know me, I tend to procrastinate and let things sit until they need to be done. So for me to be this proactive shows that I'm more passionate about this than I have been about a lot of things in my life. In the meantime, I've also been applying for more composition and audio work jobs. Sadly though, I have yet to land anything. I started to let this affect me, and I imagine a lot of people out there do the same. It is very easy to fall into the trap of thinking that your work is not good enough to be among others, and I step into that trap more often than I'll admit. As a voice actor, you will often be told to send and forget your auditions, meaning that you record it, you send it in, and then you ignore the absolute fuck out of it. And the whole purpose of this is to stop you from obsessing over whether or not you did a good enough job. This is something that I certainly still struggle with, but I thought of a couple of great points that I hope will resonate with you wonderful folk out there. Point number one, always keep someone that you trust close to you. Someone who will tell you the truth and will always be on your side. Because once you've fallen into this trap, it's not always the easiest to escape on your own. In my case, once I was ready to get out of my funk, I told my fiance exactly how I felt and thought. I said to her something along the lines of, I am worried that I am not good enough to pursue my dream. When I have no motivation to work on music or audio things, I feel terrible because my guilt tells me that I should always be working and always trying to improve every day. And for what I have done, not booking any work out of that is starting to hurt me. And she told me that she has never seen me so passionate about my work and that I shouldn't be discouraged about doing something that I clearly love doing. We all need breaks from time to time, so maybe I should be taking them. And you know what? She's right. So I gave myself a day off and now I'm much better. Point number two, the audition process is the work and obsessing over it is probably the most ridiculous thing you could possibly do. I know this is something that we are all prone to doing, so let me be frank with you about this. Obsessing over your auditions is, in most cases, caused by a lack of experience and or confidence. Because if you know that you are experienced and that you can do a good job no matter the circumstances, what is there to be worried about? For me, and this may sound a bit silly, but I no longer worry about my voice acting auditions. It's taken me three years to get to this point, but I've come to realize that I know how to express emotion through my voice. I could use some more training, sure, but I am confident in my current abilities. And if I don't get a role, then I can be certain that it is merely because I was not what they were looking for. For composing, since I haven't secured any work yet, I'm not confident that I am doing the right thing. But as long as I keep creating and putting myself out there, I know in the back of my head that I will see success one day. And so will you, dear listener. Don't concern yourself with the rocks beneath your feet when you have mountains to move in front of you. I'm not sure if that made any sense since I just made it up, but fuck it, we're rolling with it. Basically what I'm trying to say is, don't worry about the small stuff. Keep doing what you love, be confident in your decisions, and overall, have fun. With that said, it's time to start the show with your hosts, Zamudi. Insert guest name here. And future me. Take it away, folks. I think you mean insert guest host name here, but okay. <laughs> 
you That's know, right. uh, don't correct my mistakes. Oh, gotcha. Sorry. I don't mean to 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 <laughs> criticize. Um, so now you remember we're, we're sending and forgetting here. That includes the intro. Just to send it and <laughs> yeah, forget exactly. It. <laughs> Intro's done. Forget it. It's done the way it is. Okay. Well, welcome to Cole Read the Podcast, uh, a podcast by people in the voice industry about the voice industry. Um, you'll Indeed. No, you'll note there's a little bit of a change there, and that's intentional. Where it's how we're going to probably start moving forward from this point on. Um, intro was by Dorino, aka Vinny. Thank you very much. It's Don't funny. Worry, our slogan will be a lot more cohesive eventually. next time around. Yeah. It's not going to be this elaborate. People, that was part of the voice acting community, but now we're going to expand and da da da. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, we'll, we'll right. yeah, no, you're right. Thank you for calling the, out that mistake. No, we're not moving on just yet. Um, <laughs> If, you have, if you have any questions, anything you want to talk about, please feel free to email us, podcast at gmail.com, uh, podcast at gmail.com, or just come on in, join our Discord, and that's where we normally hang out and we, we do our stuff. Ooh, nice fade out there. Thank you for not keeping the whole thing going. Um, man, this is why you're the audio engineer of the group. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's like you know what you're doing. Um, speaking of audio, <laughs> if you have anything you want us to, to, to listen to, if you have a, a demo reel you're working on, if you have um, uh, a voice that you'd like to do, uh, feel free to, to show it to us. You can upload it into Discord. You can email, email it to us. We'd love to listen to it and give you some feedback based on all of that. Um, with all that in mind, let's go ahead and check in with everybody. Uh, as we can see, Buka is not available. Um, and that is because... Uh, She's currently at Sin City Anime Con, probably doing the finals of the, the VO competition stuff. And uh, good luck to her. And we, we look forward to hear what's going to happen next week. Um, in the yeah. meantime, we have Connor. Connor, hello and welcome. Hello. It's Hi. good to be back. Yes. Thanks for having me. Yeah. How was your week? Um, it was fine. Uh, it's been... It's been touch and go, you know, just, just kind of taking it day by day. Uh, it's been a strange couple of months but uh i'm keeping busy just definitely keeping busy that's the name of the game right now um i think last time i was uh, a guest on the show was uh directly after i lost my job it yes was a, was i was about to layoff. ask <laughs> yeah there's a layoff at the end of september and so throughout throughout october i've been you know uh, applying for jobs and just sort of uh focusing on hobbies and going to the gym a lot and that's like my main outlet right now nice um but How no, the it's, forearms it's, coming uh they're, they're okay you know they're getting a little bit tighter which is good they're like starting to starting to feel you know a little more substantial uh <laughs> those are like my ma- my big project lately i'm just doing a lot of like uh wrist curls and uh hammer curls mm-hmm. and stuff like that um but no yeah because the biceps are fine where they are uh i've just got to focus on what <laughs> focus on what I, what needs focused on but um yeah that's it's weird because like that's one of the things like you can control that you can just go and that's your that you can do that on your own time there's no mm-hmm. waiting for an answer you know when you're working out it's like you just go and uh de-stress decompress kill some time uh it's it's good for it's it's good for your mental health it's good for your physical health it's a great way to just spend some time um and it's there's that there's the way i've been spending my time lately it's like yeah i can send auditions and i can send job applications but then it's like well now i'm just waiting to hear back Mm -hmm. or moving on to the next it's like no let's just go work out while we're while we have time so yeah that's that's what keeping it busy has looked like for me lately but uh last week was good uh the last week and the week before i had two different second stage interviews so like there's two positions i'm sort of up for um and i had second interviews for both of them in the last couple of weeks where i was actually talking to the hiring managers so mm. um things are moving things are looking okay it's it is one of the things like you never i don't know i feel like i have a pretty good track record of when i get to that stage when i get to the point where i'm talking to hiring managers i i usually get an offer in my experience but not always mm-hmm. yeah. um so no yeah it's it's good progress but um yeah, no, it's things have been fine. Uh, my anniversary is coming up, so my cool. wife and I, uh, our first anniversary is coming up in a the, later in a couple of weeks, actually. Uh, so yeah. we're taking a little trip, little road trip um, down to Ogle Bay, which is a little resort in West Virginia, just across the border here with Ohio. Yeah. So um, yeah, that should be fun. And um, 
yesterday was cool. Actually, just yesterday, I was just doing a uh, not quite 24 hour, but most of the day uh, charity live stream with my uh, with my friends at the Lore Party Podcast Network. Oh, um, oh cool. And yeah, we 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 do it every year. It's kind of a tradition of ours. We, we take part in the uh, Extra Life charity stream program, oh, yeah. which uh, raises money for the Children's Miracle Hospital Network. Mm -hmm. uh, and no, it's always a great time. We always just get together in person at someone's house. Usually my buddy Lawrence hosts us down in Columbus. So I drove down there yesterday mm. and, uh, yeah, we just chill out, play, uh, multiplayer games, goof off. And it's, it's great. It's always a good time. Um, and yesterday was particularly, uh, memorable because it was the first time, as far as I am aware, I'm pretty sure it's the only time, first and only time I've ever won a game of Mario party. <laughs> uh, wow. Mario Party, yeah, I know. Everyone knows Mario Party is like a friendship ender of a game. Like it's one of those yeah. games. Like it just makes you mad. It just it's just a horribly stressful game. But when you win, man, does it feel good? And uh, I won in probably the funniest way possible. I my, my buddy Caleb was telling me like that's the funniest way you could win. Uh, my friend Lawrence, who was hosting us, he was about to win. Like he was in the mm -hmm. lead. And then we, I think I landed on a Bowser space and mm. Bowser did a Bowser revolution, which is when all the coins get redistributed equally. <laughs> so he no longer <laughs> had the, the coin lead. And then I got like a bonus star and I just pulled the game out. It just kind of came from behind and won. And he was oh, so nice. mad. So no, it was, it was a good time. It's always fun to just uh, get together with those guys and yeah, try and do something good. We raised like a couple hundred bucks. No, nothing ever. We never like break the bank with the fundraising, but you know, just s scraping together a few bucks for a good cause. It's always nice. And just, um, yeah, good to hang out and do something fun together. So yeah. that was yesterday. It was a long day of, I just drove down that morning, drove back that night. So it was a long oh, day. Nice. Um, oh, nice. Sure. Yeah. Slept in nice and late today. Uh, well, <laughs> daylight savings helped with that. I got an extra hour of sleep, so that was nice. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Cool. Cool. Well, welcome awesome. and thanks again. Of course. Happy to be here. Dorino, how was your week? Hey. Hey. It was okay. Uh, before we move on to that, I just want to say, Connor, I've got a really good uh, exercise regimen that will really buff out your forearms. It only, it only works oh, for one of your forearms, though, so keep that in mind. Oh, all right. Well, if you want to DM me the, the details on that later, or on, I mean... Or you can tell me on the air right now. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking about playing guitar, you fucking weirdo. Oh, gotcha. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the intro. Uh, no, so uh, this past week, uh, as I said, uh, I was kind of in a bit of a slump. Um, wasn't super happy with uh, not making like a huge amount of progress or, or uh, landing any jobs that I've been applying for. Um, and it kind of falls into that send and forget thing. Like I've been kind of like hounding my submissions for compositional work, hoping that there will be any type of activity on them, uh, which, as we all know, terrible idea. Don't do it. Send it and ignore it. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, otherwise, so, yeah, it'll just be there the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll definitely yeah. live in your in your head rent free um, for sure. So aside from that, though, uh, I think I said last week uh, I did a new demo reel commission for someone, mm -hmm. um, which uh, turned out spectacularly. Uh, if we, uh, we we have a topic today, but if if there's an opportunity to, we might go over that because um, I'd love your guys' feedback uh, on it. Uh, even if it's not me acting in it, obviously, but I, I would like to you know, know your guys' feedback regardless. Um. Yeah, I guess I didn't really do a whole lot this week, sadly. Um, it was really just um, kind of take it in easy. Just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, wow, no, sorry. I, I, just, wrong with I that. just realized that I like did nothing this week. And that's <laughs> so fine. Nothing wrong with that. I, I, yeah, this is, that's perfectly so, acceptable. Speaking so of doing nothing this week. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk about uh, some personal fun things that I did. Sure. Um, I have been playing a lot of Deep Rock Galactic, which... Fantastic oh, yeah. game. Uh, rock it's stone. very rock and stone for Carl. Yeah. Um, Carl that's right. And uh, it's actually funny because, you know, Carl's Carl in that game is spelled with a K. And uh -huh. my stepdad's uh, name is also Carl with a K. And so <laughs> I usually just say for my stepdad. Um, <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> um, so, yeah, playing a lot of that. Uh, last night I watched Saw X, which 
uh, if anybody is a fan of the Saw movies, it doesn't look like either of you are. Mm. Um, I gave it like, it was okay. It wasn't super great, but it, it, I would say it's better. Like the Saw is kind of known for falling off the bandwagon. Like they started out good and then they just plummeted and, and then they became like really lame and dumb and silly. Yeah. But this one uh, kind of kind of was better. I would say I give okay. it a six out of ten. Okay. Um, That's not so, terrible. It's good to know. Not terrible. Yeah. Just not super Possible. spectacular. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to say anything about it uh, because of spoilers. But <laughs> oh, okay, okay, sure. Um, uh, big pharma is coming, guys. Get ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's gotcha. all I'm gonna say, gotcha. and hopefully, gotcha. and hopefully, if you have watched it or are going to watch it, you will understand what I mean because it's fucking dumb. Um, yeah, that's really about it. Sadly, um, I can't really think of anything else that I did. Oh, I did auditions. I did auditions yesterday. Smart. Um, and nice. I plan on doing some more tonight, probably, uh, because uh, I don't know. I just. I, I saw a role come up or I saw a project rather with a, a few roles that I thought I would be a good fit for. So I was just like, fuck it, let's do it. Um, and I got to utilize a voice that I never, never do really, because it's kind of like in my like monster creature wheelhouse. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with it just because of uh, intros I've done. I've used that voice before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it. Cool. The end. The How end? was your week, Zamudi? It's it's good. It's good. I I still keep um, I'm still very, very involved when it comes to the uh, live show that we've got coming up December 8, 9 and 10. If you're in San Diego and come on down and watch it. Apparently we're like advertised everywhere when it comes to San Diego stuff. It, it's called Christmas Cookies and Chaos, which is an original script. And it's fascinating nice. the way that they put it together. Complete comedy. And now I've got to start doing the because I'm the narrator for it. I've got to do some of the recording. I've got to do some of the editing. So that's that's starting to really take up my time. Um, I did start playing Spider-Man 2, unfortunately, and it is an awesome game. Um, if you have an opportunity to play it, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, they have really integrated the whole two Spider-Man concept into it. And I mean, I'm only like 10 hours into it, but it's 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 a fascinating game. Um, Outside of that, I got another sleep study done, which is a pain in the butt for those of you that have ever had that. Um, basically, there's a machine that hooks up to your hand, non-dominant hand and you have to sleep with it on. Um, I couldn't use my CPAP for that night and it just made me feel absolutely awful, which basically is like, um, I, I wasted a day and I hate to say it, put it that way, but it, it, it is what it is. And we're, you know, we're, we're slowly but surely getting there. I did finish the pickups for the uh, Star Wars comic book stuff, so I was in the booth at least once. Uh, so, I mean, I'm sh- very, very slowly trying to get into it. But, yeah. mm-hmm. we we go as we can, and I think after December, I'm going to have a little bit more time to, to dedicate, because giving two days to go somewhere and do auditions, and apparently now I'm an assistant director is a kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but something else to put under your belt, and, and as we've talked, acting is a big part of voice acting, and it's important, so it's one way to flex that muscle. Mm-hmm. that's oh, a good yeah. resume builder very cool absolutely yeah. so with all that said and done let's go ahead and get get started because we do want to talk about um ai in video games so the, the whole way that this came about is my oldest son wanted to play a game called the finisher um and it is the finals the final sorry the, the finals, finals. Yeah. I, it was an f word um the finals <laughs> and he was super psyched about it open beta it was going to go on for a while um and then all of a sudden, the very next day, he tells me, you know what, never mind, they're using AI voices. Mm-hmm. And this isn't the first game. This isn't a revolutionary thing that, that all of a sudden they're using AI voices for, for a game. Um, I was very surprised that my son had such a negative reaction to it because normally he's like, ooh, if it's awesome, it's awesome. We'll just go with it. Um, so, you know, it, it's an interesting concept. So... I'd mm-hmm. want you guys, I don't know if you all have had an opportunity to hear the AI. I have not yet, no. I actually haven't yet, no. Okay. I just read the PC Gamer thing about it. Cool. So, here's what it sounds like. Now, the Kingfish, the Jet Setters, and finally, the Powerhouses. And they are off! Welcome to Quick Cash, the team that tucks away enough money for triumphs. Scotty said it! 
Let's see who's got the pace to ace this race. We've got our first elimination, Scotty. Talk about making a solid first impression on our sponsors. Hold on to your Azult bucket hats, brought to you by Azult. <laughs> if wishes were fishes, there'd be more kingfish in the arena. Only one contestant left for them. Alas, the kingfish have been wiped out. Looks like this was the one that got away from them. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Literally. Ouch, the kingfish suffered a wipeout. I guess the competition didn't have bigger fish to fry after all, Scotty. Precisely what I had in mind. The kingfish are back. Team respond. Misfortune for the jet setters. Team wiped. They'll be cooling their jets now, Scotty. And there is another vault available for our cash-hungry teams. The powerhouses are in danger, but they still have one contestant going strong. The powerhouses will need to reboot. Team wiped. This round is becoming a bit of a fixer-upper for them. After a fall from power, the powerhouses have respawned. This is a rough spot for the kingfish. One remaining contestant is trying to keep them in the game. Yikes. Team wipe for the kingfish. An exhilarating match, but now our game is over. That's a wrap for now, and even though the battle was virtual, our contestants' newfound fame is real. And there you go. So, hmm. wow. a lot of people didn't initially know that it was an AI. Some of us, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody on here has got a very well-trained voice, and we can hear the inconsistencies and cadence and everything else. But mm -hmm. a lot of people were very surprised. Yeah, I could, I could sort of see that. Like, yeah, I, I, I picked out a few indicators over the course, like throughout hearing that. But like, I think a casual listener who, you know, maybe just plays games but doesn't act in them or you know have have an inclination to, like, I, I could see how people might be fooled by that. Um, mm. Especially like, yeah, you're listening casually, not paying too close attention to it. Um, it's interesting, like, you, you know, those like TikTok AI voices, mm -hmm. um, that everyone can tell they're fake, but, or like, they're not real, real people, but this is, that did sound like a slightly more advanced version of that to me, at least. Yeah. A hundred percent. I would, I would have to agree. I, I, uh, one of the first, like the second or third line, I think, um, definitely stood out and just because of the cadence, um, you could definitely tell it wasn't a real person or it's just edited really shoddily but mm -hmm. yeah um i mean yeah compared to like other ai voices that i've heard even like the the ones that i find hilarious being like the the, the presidents playing <laughs> xbox together or like uh, right. you know alec guinness talking about anakin and ahsoka um <laughs> like those ones are kind of like it's very obvious you know that it sounds similar to the voices but it's very obvious it's ai those ones because it's in short bursts like yeah it makes it a little hard to differentiate yeah, um right although i gotta say i'm i mean i'm sure a lot of you know and, and i'm sure both you know like i'm a huge huge video game person like absolutely mm -hmm. my most favorite uh artistic medium and that kind of shit mm. really fucking annoys me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later on as to why I think people will start using this. Oh, uh, yeah. I, more. Trust me. Yeah. But at the same time, like you're, you're taking the human element out of things and that's not mm. okay. Like that's really, you, you think it's going to be good in the short term and maybe it is, but in the long term, like, it's it's just not going to be as enjoyable. No, nobody wants to listen to AI voices the whole time. Like they want if they're going to listen to voices in a video game, they want to hear an actual human, not. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Well, and <laughs> yeah. it's funny that you say that, because surprisingly. A lot of people don't care. The ones that do care are us. We're, we're in the industry. Yeah. We're trying to break in. These are parts that are getting taken away from us. But the average gamer. A won't be able to tell the difference, and B once they learn probably wouldn't really care. Mm. That's yeah. that's the most depressing part of it. Yeah, it's like it, it's it's like watching it's watching a forest get cut down. It's like you can't do anything about it. It's like it's gonna happen one way or another. Like the 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 trend will continue that way just because profit motive. There will always be the profit motive, but also just the I don't know, just the 
innovation motive. Like there will always be an inexorable march toward artificial voices being more and more lifelike. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's going to get better from here. Like, yeah, they're not convincing now, but like even what we're hearing now was inconceivable 10, 20 years ago, roughly. Right. So it's even, even five years ago, ago, even less than that. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So here, here's what something else I want to play to you guys. So these guys made a podcast and it's called meet the makers. Um, so I want you all to hear it from their point of view. Hopefully you all are, are in the screen share. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So here, here's, let me know if you have any issues in the audio. This should play for, normally for everybody else. Uh, thank you. Rat Mouse asks, who did the voiceovers? And adds, they sound really authentic. The, so here's the kicker. What did the voiceovers? So the, the thing is we use AI with a few exceptions. So all the contestant voices, like the barks, and both of our uh, commentators are AI text-to-speech. Uh, for things we call vocalizations, like player breathing, vaulting, jumping, that's something we use uh, us in the studio to record, like just grunting. Uh, we can't really get the AI to perform those kind of tasks yet. Uh, and since it's only exertive sounds, they will mix pretty well with all the AI text-to-speech voices. Um, and the reason that we go this route is that AI text-to-speech is finally extremely powerful it gets us far enough in terms of quality and allows us to be extremely reactive to new ideas uh, and keeping uh, things really really fresh so for instance if a game designer comes up with a new idea for a game mode we can have uh, voiceover representing that in just a matter of hours instead of months we don't have to do temp recordings that needs replacing um and it's just i i think it's uh, we're, we're really coming into like a new dawn when it comes to video game voices um and if it sounds a bit off it still blends kind of well with the fantasy of the virtual game show show uh, aesthetically yeah definitely and um, what you might notice is how we sort of stepped up the voiceover between cb1 and cb2 ludwig did a fantastic job with that uh, and that's a lot since we have switched and experimented with different suppliers uh, uh and what is so incre- incredibly cool uh, with the time that we live in is that the quality improvements are exponential. Uh, things happen so fast. Just a few months back, we couldn't get our TTS to produce projected shouting, and now it is possible. Uh, it's yeah, it's incredible. What a time to be alive! <laughs> yeah, shout out to Eleven Labs. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'm AI. I'm not. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's what I told you to say with my keyboard. Yeah. 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 What a time to be alive. <sighs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, and, and see, that's the point why I wanted to bring them on. They're very proud of, of their achievement. They're very proud of, of the way that this sounds and the way the technology is, has moved. Even for them, it's just, this is literally text to speech. This is they've typed. This isn't a mimic. This isn't anything else. This is literally they've typed in and this is what it's produced. And now it's doing the emotion side of it, which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, art is dead, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it, you, you do hear that uh, narrative. Like there's this, I guess, a trope at this point of like the uh, tech bros and the, the AI proponents kind of trying to spin it as oh but we're we're democratizing art we're making it so anyone can do this now we're we're making it we're giving anyone the tools to create art with ai tools or we're giving anyone the ability to it's not art it's exactly it's literally just vapid bullshit that's uh, that's the that's a corruption of the concept of artwork like when you try to sell it as oh we're democratized like no that's not what you're doing at all you're 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 uh devaluing it actually and yes i don't know it's sad it's sad as hell like any anybody can go to the fucking hardware store and, and pick up screwdrivers and wrenches and stuff like that but like you got to know how to use them and you have to know like how to apply them properly. And if you can't, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you like you're you're a bad person or that you're not like a good carpenter or plumber or fu- electrician, whatever. Like everyone has their has their thing. I, I don't. 
<laughs> get really, really no, and that's fine. Over. I mean, I don't mean to. I don't mean to piss you off, Dorino. It's just, and, and keep in mind, I'm, I'm very much playing the devil advocate side on this one because no, I know, I know. I, I'm personally I'm not a fan of what's going on. But at the same time, I have to look at it from the point of view where uh, assembly workers felt the same way, and, and I understand mm. this is art versus versus hard work. Um, mm. But I mean, innovation has a way of replacing people. And unfortunately, now we're at the point where it's not only affecting voice actors, but I mean, even it, it's it's creating so much more. So it's, this isn't just the AI VO side for me, because that, that, that has so many negative applications that you have absolutely no idea. Because I went down the rabbit hole a little bit and I found some articles and shit that I wanted to talk about. And this is why I've got the screen share on. Uh, by the way, mm -hmm. Vinny, when you do the recording, you're going to have to pull the audio from the, vi from the video because the DAW That's isn't fine. picking that up. Um, okay. So that's that's just an editing point. Okay, so obviously this isn't the first time we've seen it in, in video games. There was a game by Squanch Labs, I want to say, uh, the guy that does did Rick and Morty. He used yeah, AI voices like on it too, and and he got you know he got some some kickback because of it. But again, it all falls into the same thing. The game was still fairly popular and everything else. Um, right. Okay, so in, in the aspect of video game, we all agree. We all we all hate it, but I think it's because you know we're we're mostly on the VO side of it. Um, what happens when you apply it into more of a life situation? So check this out. I'm gonna turn on the browser so I can actually show this video too. Um, here we go. This is by uh, CNN, aka oh, stop doing that. Quest, I guess. Welcome back. Could you spot the difference between a loved one's voice and a computer-generated imitation? Well, a new artificial intelligence tool can impersonate almost anyone. And while there may be harmless ways of using the software, like pranking your family, it's also raising concerns about how fake audio clips could be used. Donio Sullivan has been testing the software. Hello? Hi, Mom. Hi, Donny. How are you? Does my voice sound different to you? Yeah, I just said that to Sinead. I said, Donny sounds so American. This is not actually me. This is a voice made by computer. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. There has been an explosion in fake audio and voices being generated through artificial intelligence technology. This is an AI cloned version of Walter White's voice. This is an AI cloned version of Leonardo DiCaprio's voice. All you need is voice and you can make it seem like they have said just about anything, even Anderson Cooper. We've come here to UC Berkeley today to talk to Hanny Fareed, a digital forensic expert, about just how easy it is to put words into other people's mouths. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> sure. But it's also really scary. I think once you put aside that gee whiz factor, I don't think it takes a long time to look at the risks. This is Wolf Blitzer. Hanny Fareed, you are in the Situation Room. That sounds That's good. I guess that sounds That's pretty good. good. By uploading just a few minutes of me and some of my colleagues' voices to an AI audio service, I was able to create some convincing fakes, including this one of Anderson Cooper. Donnie O'Sullivan is a real piece of sh**. That's AI. <laughs> is it really? That's AI. That's good. Yeah, yeah Anderson is, is really good. Man. Because Anderson doesn't have a stupid Irish accent. The technology did struggle with my Irish accent, but we decided to put it to the ultimate test with my parents. I am about to try call my mom back in Ireland and see if I can trick her with this voice. Yeah. I think I'm going to be successful. I'm nervous. I'm like, my hands are. <laughs> All right. Hello? Hi, Mom. Hi, Donnie. How are you? Just finished shooting our story here. I'm going to the airport in a while. There seems to be a delay in the phone, Donnie. Can I say a quick hello to Dad? Yep. How you doing, Eric? Hi, Dad. How are you, Ian? How are you? Good yourself? Just finished shooting our story here. I'm going to the airport in a while. How are you? Oh, you come back. You come back again, Eric? Are Kerry playing this weekend? My dad went on to have a conversation with the AI Doni about how Kerry, our home football team, had a game that weekend. Eventually, I had to come clean. Dad, I'll give you a call better later on. Could you just put me back on to mom for a second? My parents knew something was off, but ultimately they still fell for it. Oh yeah, 
some of it don't be bad, but it was like um, it was like your voice was a little tone lower and it sounded very serious. Yeah. Like you had something serious to say. Because I went, oh, jeez, my heart was hopping first. Oh, oh sorry. The voice is very funny. The voice is very funny, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll, 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 call on it. I'll call you later, Dad. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Is this not classic? The mom is like, something's wrong with my son. The dad's like, everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to close out today's ceremony with a question. If you were given a choice, would you choose to have unlimited bacon but no more video games? With fake Biden and Trump recordings going viral online, Fareed says this could be something to be wary of going into the 2024 election. When we enter this world where anything can be fake, any image, any audio, any video, any piece of text, nothing has to be real. We have what's called the liar's dividend, which is anybody can deny reality. With a flood of new AI tools releasing online, he says companies developing this powerful technology need to think of its potential negative effects. There is no online and offline world. There's one world, and it's fully integrated. When things happen on the internet, they have real implications for individuals, for communities, for societies, for democracies. And I don't think we as a field have fully come to grips with our responsibility here. And Rahel, obviously we had uh, yeah. some fun there with my parents and with Anderson Cooper. Uh, but look, it's not hard to see uh, how this can all get very, very serious, how uh, tools like this could be weaponized uh, in disinformation campaigns, uh, in scams and in fraud. And particularly uh, as we go you know, into future election campaigns around the world and, of course, the 2024 uh, election campaign just around the corner here in the US, this is something uh, we are all going to have to be uh, on a, the lookout for and the listen out for, uh, including, of course, my parents. Rahel? All right, we'll stop it right there, of course. How scary is that? Pretty pretty scary. Terrifying. Yeah. I, you notice in one yeah. of the articles, the AI was being used in scams, too. This is, right. this is, right. ex, this is exploding. This isn't just a, 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 a voice acting situation anymore. This is, yeah. you've got to start questioning everything around you. Yeah. It, it, it's funny to see our president ask, you know, what would you rather have, bacon for the rest of life, no video games, or video games and no bacon? Um, but it, that has some very serious implications because you have seen people like Joe Rogan being affect, affected by it because they were they were um, not sponsoring. What's the word? They were like endorsing something that they never really had because they were using right. AI technology. Same thing happened oh, to Mr. Yeah. Beast. So it's 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 a crazy situation. I have another story in here, and I don't think I'm not going to go too much too much further into us. Where somebody did an interview with a voice actor, and then a, later on, you find out that was completely AI. Wow! And it wasn't disclosed until the voice actor went on Twitter and said, "That is not me." Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, I think I I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, it's uh, it's very wild and and terrifying that this is the reality that we live in these days. Like, yeah, I certainly um, I did not think of uh, how much further this can be taken. Like, um, yeah, just, you know, calling up your bank, you say say you already have someone someone's bank account information. You just, you know, replicate their voice and boom, you know, you can pull all their money out. No problem. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or you receive uh, a call oh, and it's your wife that's hysterical on the line saying, you know, I need money, I need bail, I need this, go send it to that. You're not thinking rationally. Mm. Yeah. You're not going to. Yeah, no, it's. Yeah. You might not. It might not occur to you like, oh, let me ask you something that only you would know and like to confirm it's you. Like, but I, we might be heading into a situation. Uh, uh, we might be heading into a world where. You're gonna have to start doing that. <laughs> You're just like, like, yeah, you can't be. You gotta be on your guard constantly with this kind of thing. I think, I think Donny O'Sullivan himself had a, had a really good way to look at it. He said, "Yeah, like, it's funny to laugh at these like fake Biden voices and whatnot, but like, it, there are some very serious and scary implications here. Like, I remember when all the AI voice memes were getting pretty viral and kind of going around, like." God, what was it like? Um, yeah, people were taking the lines from Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind, where they're like making Dagoth Ur say funny stuff, and like, uh, and I remember la like watching those and thinking they're freaking hilarious. Been like, yeah. but 
there was a narrative of, uh, or was a discourse of like, you should stop sharing these. Don't encourage them. Like, you know, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, of course you, you think yeah, what's it's, the it's, harm, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Of course you're thinking it's a slippery slope. We don't want to encourage this kind of thing, but also it's like, it's going to happen anyway. We're, we we can't just go ahead and say, you know, bury our heads in the sand and say, that, no, if we stop laughing at it, if we stop engaging with it, it'll stop happening. Like, no, it's going to keep happening. Like, mm-hmm. It's it's one of those, like, it's out of the bag. The cat's out of the bag. It's not going back in. The technology mm-hmm. exists. It's going to keep being developed and innovated and advanced, and it's going to keep getting harder to discern from real people saying real things. Uh, uh, yeah, it's scary. So I don't know if... The answer is lawmakers need to step in and regulate this kind of thing. I, that might be it. Um, or is it down to the individual users being responsible with it? I don't know. It's well, and it's it, funny it's, because it's, uh, I keep hearing that YouTube demonetizes stuff that uses AI voices, but yet mm. all of the content that I see out there, a lot of the content when it comes to like explanation videos or comic book reviews or story all are ai voices and these channels keep making it and obviously they do it for a reason yeah so they have to still be making money off of it um well i think there was a there was a pretty big name uh creator uh quibble cop i think who like hard leaned into using ai like to the point where they just started putting out videos and they're like by the way all of my videos recently have all been ai generated like and, and nobody had any idea but yeah, somebody needs to give James Cameron a call right now. Please, James Cameron, <laughs> save us. Tell us what we need to do. It, uh, he warned us and we didn't listen. So, yeah, no. Skynet well, has a voice now. And unfortunately, it's ours. <laughs> well, so I think I think what kind of kept me a little naive to this stuff is like, well, one, you want to have some faith in humanity hoping that they will draw a line saying, you know, all right, here's, here's where we should stop. Clearly that's not happening. No. Um, But secondly, like prior to the AI voice stuff, uh, Dolly was the, like the um, AI generated image building thing Mm -hmm. where you could put in whatever terms you wanted and it would compile images based on whatever, like, and even I want to say not even a year ago, like it was, it was pretty iffy, you know, like sometimes it'd be, it'd be good and and make some pretty realistic uh, images, but there'd always be like, you know, people would have like extra fingers or like arm, extra arms or legs or, you know, some weird thing that lets you know it was not real. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Mm -hmm. it now, like it is scary how accurate it can be like especially pulling like pictures of celebrities like doing mm-hmm. random stuff all the deep fake stuff that's going on absolutely yeah well i mean that's a whole nother can of worms but yeah i mean i i don't know i don't even know what to think anymore i i'm just want to bury my head in the sand <laughs> well i'm sorry to, to, yeah. to call and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to specify that i didn't want to just focus on this on the vo side because this is this is going to affect the whole industry as a whole I mean, yeah. look at what actors were fighting for this whole time. It was it was their yep. AI representations in these mm-hmm. movies. It, it's this is just completely growing out of control. You've got mm-hmm. the random person submitting papers that are made out of Chat GPT. You've got right. art that's being created um, and displayed, and people are making money off of it, and it's all AI generated. Well, mm-hmm. an important caveat to that AI generated meaning it's pulling examples from existing art, so it's kind of plagiarizing to some degree. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it's like there. I think to my earlier point about regulations, like I think laws are going to have to be made at some point to differentiate between uh, wholly original works and AI works, and you know, I, I guess one upside to how crazy things are getting right now, like how prolific this technology is getting. If there's an upside to it, I would say that it's there's going to be a more more awareness can lead to more backlash and more backlash can lead to better regulation. And also mm-hmm. the the harder that the labor unions represent themselves, like, you know, we have the SAG strike still going. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the, the writer strike finally reach a somewhat agreeable conclusion, at least satisfactory yeah. conclusion. But the more labor fights for its rights and the more the unions strengthen themselves and you know gain popular support the more likely it will be that 
reasonable regulations on this kind of technology can be can be drafted at some point uh, to hopefully protect the livelihoods of creatives like ourselves. Um, and but I, I guess to to uh, advocate again <laughs> to do a little bit of devil's advocate even my own. I guess there is that idea out there. There's a, there's an attitude out there that oh th- it's just exciting technology. Think of what we could do with it. Think of the different applications like beyond you know taking people's jobs beyond like making uh certain professions obsolete like there are exciting applications and the sky's the limit we just have to keep pushing that whatever Uh, the inverse of that is i guess my cynical side would say every time technology has allowed for automation working class people have suffered Mm -hmm. like the idea of technology the the conceptual idea of automation is that Oh, you can just make people's jobs easier. So they still have a living. They still have a career. They just can do more in less time so they can have more time to just not work. Mm -hmm. Like the idea is, oh, an assembly line would be instead of working eight hours, you just work four, but get paid for eight and then go home. But that was that's never been the the reality. The reality is we can hire fewer people while producing more and pay them less. So, like, no, the idea, the ideal of automation has never been achieved because the profit mode have gotten the way. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like, yeah, th- the exciting applications that this technology has uh, is all well and good, but that doesn't survive when it meets the reality of profit motive. Like, well, no, we're going to cut out the middleman. We're going to cut out the uh, the labor cost and uh, just keep producing. That's kind of how it always goes. Um, and that's 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 kind of the downside of it. But the upside is, like I said, yeah, the more this kind of thing is out there and people are aware of it and hopefully back, hopefully just meaningful action is taken eventually. That's, that's my only yeah. optimism. It falls on the hands of the consumers. It's up to the consumer that to too, say, yeah. yeah, no, you know what? We don't want this. We want soul. We want people, but you've mm-hmm. got, you, you just heard in a couple of minutes ago, well, not even a couple of minutes ago, the, the, the developers themselves going, well, we can do this shit now in minutes instead of months. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge difference for them. Um, but at the same time, right. why is line production taking months? This this really isn't something that should be taking that. So I, there's there's innovation no. that can be, t- be taking place on both sides. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it's it. Bottom line is the people that are getting affected in this case is the people. And there's a reason why we're so against it. The average gamer is not going to care. The average person, the average consumer. There's a reason why those videos are popular. There's a reason why that that shit is moving forward. It's because they want it. Are they seeing anything out of it? Are games getting cheaper because they're not using voice actors? No. <laughs> no, they're going, they're exactly going up. My point. They're more expensive <laughs> these days. Yeah. Exactly my point. Yeah, it's the profit motive. You're just going to you're going to do more with less and charge the same amount. Exactly. Yeah. So that's I don't that's know why one I side up to today's episode. This is bringing me down again god Thanks, damn it guys. Dorino knock it off it's, this is this is a healthy conversation That's, without, this is why we fight though exactly with like, without yeah. conflict without understanding oh, we'll, nothing will ever change so I mean sorry that we're not the happy go lucky today and, and and that it's messing up your mind but um no no I'm just like <laughs> it's um well okay let me let me just quickly say like at my devil's advocate part in um in this instance, with the AI voices in the finals, um, someone had brought up a good point about like how sports games could start utilizing that so that they could make uh, like live calls as you're playing the game. You know, such and such player did this certain action at such and such time or in such and such place like that brings a whole uh, new level of realism because it's no longer just canned lines that are all mm-hmm. recorded or, and you don't have to record for every single individual um, situation and, and make sure that they all mesh well together. AI couldn't mm-hmm. just do that for you. Like, you know, it just takes takes whatever inputs you put in and it spits out whatever output, um, which I can agree would be very cool, would be very intuitive and I think would be a nice addition. But again, right. like and I know a lot of people will probably disagree, but video games in the current day are art, simply put. 100%. And yes. and mm-hmm. I don't ever think that a machine would be able to 
give us anything, any type of meaningful art. Um, yeah. The same could be said about human beings personally. Like I know that there's artists out there that, you know, uh, put out these things that they think are amazing, but in, you know, a lot of people's opinions, or at least in my opinion, are not super great. Um, but again, that's like, that's the whole point of art. You're, you're supposed to have an opinion. You're supposed to have a feeling about it. Um, yeah. And so it just, it, it, in regards to, uh, AI and, and art itself, it just, it makes me very concerned that, yeah, this is, this is the decline guys. This is the downhill, like, yep. and there is probably yeah. no recovering from it. And I don't, I don't understand why people can't just let things be and let people create for them like again i've i've always said you know creating art or 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 being an entertainer whatever you want to call it it's a job it, it, simply put like yep. being an actor is a job being a painter is a job like it, it they're all functional careers that people can have why mm -hmm. is everyone trying to fucking replace it <laughs> money money yeah simple it's very simple. It's not that deep. They can save money by doing it. That's literally it. Because uh, yeah, like I can, I could pay you to do a, to a voice act in my game, or I could pay or not pay a computer to do it and save money. I'm sorry, but it all comes down to saving money. Uh, it literally does. In a fair world, we would have our jobs automated while we could just sit at home and make art all day. But instead, we have to keep working our jobs while the art gets automated. <laughs> so yeah. It's not fair at all. No, it's a definitely yeah. a bullshit situation. It's not fair remotely, but I, I mean, mean, it's just I kind of even, the profit motive strikes once again. That's all I'm saying. I wouldn't even necessarily want like my nine to five automated. Like, yeah, obviously mm -hmm. everyone's jobs get frustrating and, and sometimes unbearable, but like that's what keeps you getting up <laughs> keeps you getting up day after day is is mm. just being able to get out there and 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 do something whether you like it or not like so i'm not just, unique in my suffering uh, is that what you're trying to tell me <laughs> correct yes oh, shit. Uh, no, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not special Everyone's my brain is short circuiting right now i'm fucking I'm sorry. annoyed i'm sorry um no, but like, I just, I, I don't understand why people can't just let things be. And what? and I really feel out of my element here because I was not ready to have this big political discussion. I'm sorry. I was ready to just complain sorry, about yeah. AI <laughs> and, and how it's taking our gerbs away. Um, <laughs> yeah. Took our gerbs. And it's funny because I was, I was watching um, um, an anime earlier and it's, it's a combination between the computer generated and, and the actual hand drawn stuff. Well, and, and as far as that goes now, and at some point, this conversation was also had by people that do anime. Now you've got mm -hmm. AI or computers auto-generating these environments that normally somebody would have drawn. So this is just a repeating cycle of, of automation. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it's what up. do we do to stop it? And that's what I, I that's mean, as consumers, the only thing that you can do is, is not promote You're, you're giving me you, the face. You, you, can't, I love you it. can't rely on people. I'm sorry, but the, like the, the general populace are super unreliable. I've worked customer service enough to oh, know trust me. that people are not reliable. So what the fuck are we going to do? <laughs> you can ask people to vote with their wallets, but whether or not they do is completely up to them. hundred yeah. percent. Right. I mean, the only right, thing which we, we can do is, is try to give a performance that's better than AI. And, and mm -hmm. that's, that's as far as what, that's as much power as we have. Mm. As yeah, people just, that we are just, just, we just keep, yeah. we keep doing, we keep perfecting our craft as best we can. We keep collaborating with creators who value what we are able to do that machines can't do yet. And we just keep on keeping on. We just keep doing our thing and we encourage those around us to only patronize creative projects that utilize human voices and human talent. Uh, and, you know, people are going to do what they're going to do. Uh, there are going to be uh, developers who save money, save time mm -hmm. by not paying voice actors to do their lines for them. But there are also those who still value what we're able to do. And we just keep working with them. We keep doing what we're, what we're good at. Yep. 
And I mean, what else are we going to do? <laughs> don't I, don't help whenever, the industry because we know those right. jobs are still out there. Those that want to take our voices to train AI, this is what it's leading to. Yeah. So that's the other yeah. thing that we need to be very careful for. Although they don't need us as much as they used to. It used to be 40,000, 20,000 words. Now it's minutes mm -hmm. of audio. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, make sure you read your contracts very thoroughly from now on because there could be clauses in there that, oh, by the way, we're allowed to clone your voice <laughs> when yep. you do this. Yeah, I, yep, so. yep, yep. there was the, the expansion for, for Cyberpunk recently, I think, took the, the voice of oh, one of yeah. the original person, but that was with the family's consent. The family's consent. Yeah, yeah, yeah is, because the, the original actor had passed. Right. So they just right. wanted to have his voice continue on in the game. Which is great, but it's just, it's, right. this, this power can be used for good, this power can be used for evil. So mm -hmm. I think that's ultimately where we're trying to get to. Right. Whew, sorry, I didn't mean to bring down the room with this topic, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's a heavy one. You know, it's... No, I mean, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and don't get me wrong, like, if I was in a better mindset, I would be more apt to have this conversation. But, uh, yeah, it's just, I, it's, I, I'm starting to feel like... Uh, I'm starting to feel like the guys that hold up in a bunker waiting for aliens to invade, you know, <laughs> like the, the tinfoil hat guys, basically, that are just constantly paranoid about everything. And yeah. like and, and now all of society is going to know what it feels like to be paranoid all of the time because <laughs> there's so much shit to worry about. And don't get me wrong, like I know. Hmm. I know a lot of people don't necessarily agree with like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson on everything, but uh, he made a very good point in that uh, a lot of people these days would say that they are they feel a lot less safe in general just because of all the shit that's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But when you compare it to actual like analytical facts, crime rate is down, drug use is down, like homicide is down, like all mm -hmm. of it is is saying that technically you should feel safer and a lot of it comes down to like you know uh propaganda i guess like just the media saying you know all this bad stuff's happening you know be afraid make sure that there's no like you know ak-47s in your children's halloween candy um <laughs> so right. like i i i understand but maybe uh in the current moment i'm blowing this out of proportion and thinking that um ai is just going to you know it's going to get Completely to Terminator levels yeah. real soon, and and we're all going to be fucked. But um, yeah, just don't give it a body. Don't, don't give it a body yet. We're fine. Don't don't. Yeah, keep it in the cloud, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. Keep it in the cloud. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. No, no. Keep it. Okay, no. Sorry. Keep it on a server that you can hack apart with a fire axe if you need to. <laughs> uh, don't don't give it interconnectivity. <laughs> I guess separate it from the internet quick. Yeah, <laughs> shut it off. <laughs> ah, my one weakness, an Ethernet cable. <laughs> <laughs> um, an odd plugged cable, no. No, that's it. That's the end. <laughs> All right. I, and it's an interesting point, but let's let's go ahead and, and let's wind down a little bit. And, and as, as we've said, it, the best that we can do is just A, not help, not do our part to not help this along. Do the best that we can and keep learning. Because right now, they, they've even said there are some things that it still can't do, but it doesn't mean that it won't be able to. So eventually, eventually yeah. let's just do our best and, and continue forward. This is a weird time for us to want to jump into this this profession, but I think, you know, as long as you're enjoying it, you're having fun and you're doing what you want to do, keep going. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I I was watching a Mr. Beast video before we before we started this, and I, somebody asked him, "What's what's the secret to your success?" His answer was, "Do something you like long enough, and eventually you'll do really well with it." Hmm. I liked it. So well said. Yeah. So uh, thank you everybody for that's been here uh, during this very very interesting topic. If you have anything that you want to add on. Do me a favor, add it into the comments, send us an email, uh, anywhere that you get this podcast. Click on that thumbs up, click on that subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything on YouTube, and it would really help us along 
um, as we go. If you have any other topics you want us to talk about, please feel free to do so. Email us at coldreadthepodcast at gmail.com. Join our Discord. Uh, we love to have you there. It's a growing community, and we, we just, we if you have any questions, anything, you can totally reach us there. Uh, we're generally online. We're playing some video games at some point or another, or we're willing to. Let us know what you're playing, and we'll jump on. Um, yeah next week is my intro and i believe that's going to be uh veterans day weekend so uh early happy veterans to those of you that are celebrating it come this friday um and then yeah we'll have everything up and and ready to go so like i said give us a like that helps us out talk to us we we want to hear if this is helping you out if if you have anything that you want to add on um add it on to those comments until then we will catch you all next time thanks for being here bye-bye bye-bye take care and remember to drink good to each other. Your, your water. Drink it. That's it. Drink it. Bye. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>